Now let us look into the design of the shear reinforcement in the pre-stressed concrete member. First, we need to establish the fundamentals of shear reinforcement. You know that the concrete section itself perceives some degree of shear capacity, even though without the shear reinforcement. Therefore, normally we will need to check the shear capacity of the member first against the design shear force. If the shear capacity of the member is greater than the shear force, that means the member will be safe even without the shear reinforcement. In this case, normally we will provide nominal shear link as a safety measure. However, if the capacity of the member is less than the design shear force, that means shear reinforcement is required. And as far as the design is concerned, the design shear force is entirely resisted by the shear reinforcement. Assuming that the concrete section itself does not contribute to any shear resistance. With this understanding established, we will proceed with the discussions in terms of the design procedures for the shear reinforcement. The design process normally started with calculating the shear force. It is basically ultimate limit state. Therefore, the factor of safety will be 1.35 and 1.5 for GK and QK respectively. The design shear loads can be calculated from the formula here for a simply supported member or based on the shear force diagram generated through analysis of the member. Next, you will need to check the shear loop against the shear capacity of the member itself. It is termed as VRD maximum. This VRD maximum represents the maximum shear capacity which is achievable by a section. And there will be two possible outcomes of the checking. If you find the shear loop is actually more than the VRD maximum, that means that the maximum capacity achievable by the sections is still lower than the design shear loop. No matter how you provide the shear reinforcement, the section is still likely to fail. With that, you will need to redesign the section. The second possible outcome is the shear load is less or equals to the maximum capacity of the section. That means it is possible for you to have a higher resistance in shear than the shear load so that the section does not fail. Only with these conditions being fulfilled you can proceed with the following calculation steps. Now let us look into the calculations to determine the VRD maximum. It is basically the maximum shear resistance by the compression struts. The equation is given here. There will be sigma C, the width of the web, the lever arm, and also the angles of the shear. As we are quantifying the maximum shear resistance, we shall use the maximum allowable angle under shear, which is 45 degree. The lever arm Z is determined from the stress plot diagram, which is determined by this formula. This stress plot diagram represents how do we obtain the lever arm Z. The BW here represents the width of the web and sigma C here represents the maximum stress in compression strut. 
it is obtained based on this formula where the alpha CW can be either of these three equations depending on their range of R. The R here is determined by this formula. It is obtained by dividing the sigma CP with FCD. Sigma CP represents the stress due to the pre-stressing force. As calculated by dividing the total pre-stressing force divided by cross-sectional area of the beam. The stress calculated needs to be less than 0 0.2 FCD. FCD represents the design strength of the concrete as obtained from this formula. It is basically by dividing the FCK characteristic strength of the concrete with the partial factor of safety of the concrete which is 1.5. This is also the FCD, the design compressive strength of the concrete. Based on the R value of 10, identify the range it is in and the alpha CW can be determined. Also in the functions of R. The next parameter will be the new one. It is basically the efficiency factor as given by this formula. Again, in the functions of the concrete strength. Acquiring all the value here, you are able to compute the maximum stress in the compression struts, which subsequently produce the maximum shear resistance by the compression struts. Check against the shear loops. If the resistance is less than the shear loops, you need to propose the bigger section. And if the resistance is more than the shear loops, you may proceed with the following calculation steps.